Today we're looking at the Erie Canal. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com where you'll find more resources that go with many of the Bell Ringer videos. Stretching over 350 miles, the Erie Canal through northern New York State connects the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean. Built during the first half of the 1800s, basically dug by hand prior to large-scale excavating machinery being available, the Erie Canal is considered to be a marvel of engineering. The canal would turn New York City into an economic powerhouse as goods and resources flowed through the city and the city went from a population of 120,000 in 1825 to over 1 million by 1860. All along the canal, major cities and towns grew, such as Buffalo, Rochester, and Albany. Ever since the earliest explorers came to North America, there had been a search for a waterway that would connect the interior of the continent to the Atlantic Ocean. The Midwestern region, what today would be states such as Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, had a wealth of resources, minerals, timber, and especially fertile farmland to grow crops. However, trying to get these resources to markets on the East Coast was difficult and time-consuming, as everything had to be loaded and moved over land pulled by horses or oxen. In 1807, New York merchant Jesse Hawley began writing essays suggesting a canal be constructed connecting Lake Erie at Buffalo to Albany, New York on the Hudson River. The Hudson River would then flow down to New York City. Hawley's idea caught the attention of the mayor of New York City, DeWitt Clinton, who saw the canal as the key to the growth of New York. In 1817, Clinton was elected governor of New York and made building the canal his number one priority. On July 4, 1817, construction of the canal began near Utica, New York. Work was difficult and slow as the crews were attempting to dig a canal 40 feet wide and 4 feet deep, with much of it being through thick forest that had to be cleared and going through solid rock which could only be moved by using gunpowder to blast their way through. Two years after construction began, only the first 15 miles were complete with over 340 miles to go. Many in New York blamed the slow progress on Governor Clinton and began to call the project Clinton's Ditch or Clinton's Folly. Progress continued, however, as it is estimated that close to 50,000 workers would take part in the construction over the next eight years, with a large portion of the workforce being made up of Irish immigrants who had recently come to America. Of the 50,000 that worked on the canal, it's estimated that over 1,000 people died during the construction due to blasting accidents, construction collapses, and many dying from disease. One challenge that had to be overcome was the elevation difference between Buffalo and Albany, with Buffalo setting over 400 feet higher than Albany. In order to make the canal flow smoothly between the two cities, a series of 83 locks, which would raise and lower boats to different levels to account for the elevation change, were constructed. They also had to construct two aqueducts, or in other words, water bridges, for the canal to flow over other streams. After eight years of construction, on October 26, 1825, the Erie Canal officially opened, connecting the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean. The total cost to build the canal was just over $7 million. Governor Clinton boarded a boat called the Seneca Chief and led a victory flotilla down the 363 miles of the canal. The canal revolutionized transportations of goods and people. Prior to the canal's construction, the trip from Buffalo to Albany took two weeks traveling on a stagecoach. Now the trip only took five days. Goods and raw materials from the Midwest region could now be shipped cheaper and quicker than ever before. New York City eclipsed other major port cities of the U.S. as by 1853, 62% of all U.S. trade was traveling along the canal. In the following decades, the canal was widened and deepened to handle the ever-increasing traffic along the waterway. Eventually, however, as railroads began to be built across the nation connecting east to west, the canal began to be used less and less as railroads could travel more direct routes to different locations. In the early 1900s, the state of New York constructed updated larger canals to handle barge traffic and much of the original Erie Canal was abandoned. Today, much of the original canal is preserved for its historic significance and is used primarily by recreational boaters. 
The Erie Canal, an amazing feat of engineering and construction, truly transformed the country as it connected the East Coast to the interior of the continent and sparked enormous growth and prosperity as the young nation was establishing its identity. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.